welcome. This is Ruth and I've got another one of Tonic's March Madness 2024 launches and this one is called the Enchanted Fairy Village Die Collection and it is a huge collection with 85 different dies in it. Now I'll leave the link down below to all the other uh, die sets that are in this March Madness collection and hopefully you've already seen some of them and are enjoying them because they're absolutely spectacular. When these big launches come along I just can't wait to see what's in them and get started to make things because they're usually something really, really out of the ordinary. Now, I can't say what the others are because I'm not sure what order these are going to be in, but I've already made lots of things up and this is actually the last one that I'm making. So I'm really excited to have a look at this. And we can see already, whenever you do see this, that there are different sizes here. So it's a kind of a fairy house uh, in two different shapes. And I'm just looking at the packaging. I don't actually have the original packaging, but I've downloaded some stuff there. And we've got the Maisie Mushroom Fairy House, which the finished size of it will be approximately 140 millimeters by 165 by 140. And for those of you in inches, that is 5.5 by 6.5 by 5.5 inches. So that is the... Uh, Maisie one and then we've got the Titania Tulip so that's a kind of a different shaped roof on it the uh, fairy house as well and that's 135 by 130 by 135 millimeters which is 5.3 by 5.1 by 5.3 inches and I know I do get asked this quite a bit so I'm happy to help I can see it on the sheet there the largest die in this set is 140 millimeters by 133 which corresponds to 5.5 inches by 5.2. So for those of you with a smaller die cutting machine, I think that would be perfect. That one is the biggest and that would go through because that's five and a half inches. So I hope all of that is helpful. If you do enjoy this, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and leave me a little comment. But most of all, I would really, really love you to subscribe to my channel. It would really, really help my channel along if you would do that and hit the notification bell. You'll not miss any of the other videos as they come up if you do the if you hit the notification bell but it really really helps my channel along if you do subscribe so thank you very very much to everybody who has already done that and again my affiliate links for everything that i use in this will be down below in the description i've also been asked to use very specific colors and they're from uh, color packs that will be available uh, probably at discounted prices at the same time as the launch so check down in the description of the video and you'll find all of the information about those down there too but just look at that now i don't want to talk too long about it i really just want to get started but you're going to see already when you look at this so many different elements that you could use for all sorts of things straightforward cards that you want to have little fairy doors and windows and all sorts of things really really beautiful things on there and i particularly fell in love with a little die there that looks like little pebbles that could be a beautiful little path or it could be used as sort of stonework around the house anyway with a bit of imagination you'll be able to make all sorts of things there so i am going to get the card out and i'll be right back i actually love little fairy houses so i will add some photographs if you're interested in a little sort of 3d one that i made as a table for the garden and i keep it stored away in the winter and bring it out and it's always a very cheerful little table to use and if you want to see that don't forget you can have a little look at that too i've even made a video of how i made that back at the time but i'll certainly add some photographs and maybe put the link to the video down below if you're interested in that as well and one more thing before i carry on i will have some photos at the start of the video but i always uh, i've got into the way now of adding lots and lots of photographs at the end of the video so don't forget to hang around until then and check all of those out because you'll be able to see this from different angles that I'm not able to show you at, at the time when I'm making it. I'm going to start off with the tulip shaped fairy house and you'll see all the dies that you need to cut out all the die cuts in the cutting list in your instructions there but you'll need one of these this is the base and you'll need six of these side panels and six roof panels now I've cut all of these out in 300 GSM ivory card, that's smooth card, and then I've gone ahead with some of the decorative panels on them and as you can see I have used some of the, this, this is coffee cream 
and I'm just going to show you the lovely dies that I used here. That's that and that. So this one has been cut out in coffee cream and the two of them together then in ivory again and it gives a really lovely uh, sturdy kind of roof. So I've then folded all of these little glue tabs back and I'm just going to set those aside for the moment. But I have six of these already for my roof panels. For the side panels then I've cut out six of this in the ivory as I said and then I have used this with espresso brown and this beautiful uh, sort of debossing plate on it and I have glued those on top and you can see the detail there just to get a little bit more detail while that was still in the plate I'll just show you what I did you can run it through your die cutting machine with an embossing plate if you like but while that was on there I just took a uh, an embossing tool or a stylus, anything at all, and I didn't even go carefully into the grooves. I literally just ran it over the back like that, and it caught some of those grooves and made them a little bit deeper. And you can see the lovely pattern on there. Hopefully you can see it. It looks really good in real life anyway. So I have then glued those onto the back of these panels, and I'm going to go ahead and do that with this one now as well. Now, if you want to add any little doors or windows, and you're just going to add them on top, you can wait and add those at the end whenever you see exactly where you want them. But I have decided that I'm going to add some uh, vellum in behind and do a few little cuts through here. So I need to do that, obviously, when the die cuts are flat like this and before I assemble them. So I have got a little circle die. And I don't even know where I've put it now. But it was the circle die with the window in it. And I cut this out here. And I've also done it on here. And then I used it with the little window die on top of it. And I've cut myself these two little shapes out here. Those are the dies I used. So that one actually just cuts the circle out of there. And then if you use both of those together, it gives you this lovely little shape. So obviously, if you've cut that out, you've nothing to glue this onto. But then you can just take a little panel of vellum, as I have done, and glue it onto the back. And then I have taken the beautiful little die and made some curtains. And that's this one. I've also cut that out in green because I thought it made a kind of little leaf shape as well. There it is. And I can go ahead and glue that on top of the vellum as I've done there. And then glued the window on top of that. So I'm going to do that with this one as well. And then I'll show you how I did the door. whenever you're doing any die cutting on one of these areas that you've already got a die cut especially something with embossing on make sure you use this tape because it doesn't pull the surface off now I've actually cut the little rectangle into the doorway here and it actually I forgot to use that tape I just used a bit that was there and you can see it's actually pulled the surface off but this tape doesn't do that and um, I'm this will be okay because I'm actually going to add a little bit on afterwards that's the little die that I used just to cut the doorway out of here and there's the rogue tape you can see it I really shouldn't have used that especially when I've got a couple of layers but I can cover it anyhow so I'm not going to take that off again so now I want to add a little piece of vellum in behind that door as well and that will mean that all of this is nicely closed up and I'll be able to put a little battery tea light in it you could use this as a little fairy house or you could use it, use it as a gift box at the end um, but I just thought this little piece where the, the light would be showing through if you had lights in it, of course, <laughs> would be very nice. So there we are. Now, I have also cut out a little door and I'm just going to show you how I did that because um, it obviously gets assembled with a couple of bits and pieces together. So I have cut the little door out, as I said, from here and obviously that then gave me a espresso brown door but I didn't want that because I wanted it to have a bit of contrast so I have recut that in the pearlescent card and you can see the lovely embossing there and then I took this die and I cut that out in the coral pink and I have put that on here with this little hinge part on the back just to hold the door onto the back of that and that then is going to get glued on here and as you can see uh, the little piece of acetate or sorry the little piece of vellum is showing through there so I'm going to hold on to that in the meantime just until I get all these pieces assembled and then I can 
do all the little bits of decorating after that. I actually think this is very exciting. Once you get to this stage and you're just going to decorate, it's really, really lovely. So we're going to start off with this one. This is the hexa hexagon base for the bottom of it. And I'm going to go right around here with all of these pieces and glue them all on. Now, you'll need to have all of these little tabs burnished back as well. A little bit of tape on there. And the rounded ones are actually the glue tabs. The little ones in between aren't actually glue tabs, so you don't need to worry about those. Give all these a little curve as well with something, maybe a pen, or as I did, I just curved them over the edge of my desk. And there's one that still needs done. So, we'll glue these all on. see the way I, I place these I've got the door here and the ones with the two open windows there and then I'll probably put little window panels on the outside of that one because I want to show you how that works as well but once you've got all of those on and the glue is actually adhered it's grabbed well you can go ahead then and just take your time and make sure you do this very very carefully I'm going to just put glue down these little tabs here you can put, put it on those spacers if you want as well it doesn't really matter but uh, the tab, the circles are actually the little tabs there for the glue. But anyhow, just be very, very careful and hold those together then. I'll do it this way actually because I can see it coming around towards myself. So if you just take a couple at the bottom first of all and hold those, this gives plenty of time to grab before you move on to the next one. And obviously the better you've got the curve on your card, the better that's going to hold as well. You could even put a little bit of double sided or high tack tape on there just to catch one or two of those tabs to hold them. But it's really, uh, I prefer that with a wet glue, as you probably know, and uh, it makes a really, really good, strong, sturdy job at the end of it. So just take your time and there you are. See those little pieces in between, make sure that, make sure that there's no gaps down there so if you just take your time and hold all of that together you're not going to have any little spaces now you can follow that the whole way around the box and it doesn't take too long when it comes to adding the last one in and just putting the, the glue on the tabs and holding that together I find it's much easier if you put the top tab on and hold it and then go back down and work your way down to the bottom that way because the others are all going to be held in place the whole way around already and it'll just spring off if you don't hold that top one in. So that should help to make it easier for you. Now you can go ahead and glue all these little tabs on at the top to hold the rest of that all together. Now I can go ahead and glue this little door on and I'll be able to make a little panel to put up on the top of it as well. taken this little die and cut it out twice and then just overlap the two together there and all you need to do is fold all those little tabs in and glue them together and you'll make yourself a lovely little dimensional part to put at the top of the door so I'm going to do that and I've actually just made it in the same colour as the door frame because that just looks really nice
you can see here then how I've taken all these panels that I cut and I showed you earlier for the little roof and then I've cut this die twice. So I've glued them onto this and then I've glued another one over the glue tabs. So that's sort of double thickness, one on either side there because it's not an awful lot, it's not a big area. So you really need to keep that quite secure and make sure everything's well folded down and burnished. And then you can go ahead and just do exactly the same thing, although it's easier this time because you're not going as far down with this and there's plenty of room to hold it. So just put glue on all these little tabs and glue each one to the next. To make the little windows then that you just put onto the back without um, actually making a hole in first, I've put two little curtains onto some vellum and then I'm just going to glue this directly on top as I've done there and then just follow that around with the scissors and that gives me two that I can glue onto the other little places there at the back. For the little top piece of the roof then I've used this one, that's the outer die that cuts this shape and then these two together cut that beautiful shape there that I've put on top and then I have put these onto a little hexagon which is this one and then reinforce the top of that as well and I'm just going to go ahead and glue these tabs together in exactly the same way as I did for the other and then I can attach this onto the top of this roof. Now we've got our lovely sort of two-tier roof and the little house and you want to attach this on so it just sits down like that but we're going to make a little collar to fit inside so you'll cut three of those and I've already attached them by these little tabs here and then when the three are attached you just need to bring that round and that forms a little collar. When the glue has grabbed on that then you go ahead and put some glue on these little tabs Fold them in underneath and work your way around until you've got a lovely little shape that makes the collar that we can then fit up inside here. Now you can go ahead and add glue onto that beveled part and fit it up inside the roof and that will act as a stabiliser and holds it better onto the little house. Just align all those pieces with the flat sides of your roof inside there and make sure it's level. So when the glue is dry on that, you'll be able to just pop this up inside and it fits on really, really snugly there. And now is the really exciting part where you can go ahead with all of the die cuts that you've used and made. Uh, hopefully, if not, you can start on it now and I'm going to cover this first of all and I'll add lots and lots of bits and pieces on here and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. But it's really just a matter of cutting out lots and lots of those decorative pieces. I have lots of ivy, lots of uh, all sorts of things, little mushrooms, lots of little flowers and I'll show you how I've attached them and how I've made them whenever I get them all glued on. So I'll take the little roof off first and then we'll just start to decorate and really enjoy this. Now, you maybe noticed there that I actually put the door right down at the bottom and I haven't left room for the lovely little steps. I've actually made steps here, but obviously, unless I put a little platform underneath that, um, that's not going to work. So uh, that's a shame, but there they are. Um, you never know, we might just put one and have a little door at the back or something. We'll see, but I'll show you how to make them anyway. and. Uh, just go ahead and decorate. These are the two dies then that you're going to need to make the top and bottom step. So the bottom one is this one with the flatter areas on it and this one makes the top one. So all you need to do is burnish all these little score lines really really well on both of them and fold these in. So first of all on this one I'm going to glue these little tabs
and then I'm going to glue the little corner ones just inside there, those little triangular ones, and they go in there. We're going to glue the tabs that are in here first of all. So that's that one and that one on both sides. Just pop that in there and in there. And then the triangular ones again. And then these little ones on each side, those little rectangular ones. They go down inside there. And this one can either go over the top or down inside. It doesn't really matter because that's going to go up against the back here. You'll see that the back edge is slanted you see here so that's this one and the same on this one and you'll just want to put glue on the bottom here and glue this directly on the other one so that both the slants are at the same place at the back there just like that and then that will fit directly up against the side of the little house. So that should have gone on there, but I forgot. So I am going to take this off and I've already taken the window off there and you can see I've made a little bit of a mess, but I'm going to glue this on here and then I'm going to make a little back door that comes out here and you come down the steps at the back door. So I still have my steps on because I really did want to show you how to use those. And I can cover that up in a minute or two. I've already worked that out. There you are. Where there's a will, there's a way. I've got the little steps on and they're at the back door. And the back door looks really, really lovely as well. So I have added lots and lots of foliage around there. So you'll be able to see that there's beautiful little dies here. And they cut out little flowers, but you need a little background on them. So they actually fit on top of these ones. So when you cut those out, you just layer them directly. Cut these ones out and, and cut those ones out. Those are plain and you layer them on top and you can see you get these little shapes here. And then lots and lots of foliage and uh, more windows and some more little leaves and flowers there. And I think it's really, really pretty. So there you are. I've added these areas on as well. And these were made with uh, both of these dies together. I've cut one out plain and then the two of them together and layered them up. And then I've actually added those on in 3D foam pads. And wherever possible, I've left a couple of the little stones and bits and pieces in there as well. Now I'm moving on to the Maisie Mushroom. And I've got all of the die cuts that I need just to get started with this. And then we're going to have fun with lots of lovely decoration after all of that. But you can see here that there are three big dies with ten sides on them. And uh, we're told to use this one, sorry, the middle one for the base of this. So I have cut that out and there it is. Now there's another two here which actually turn out to be frames, which you use the biggest ten sided shape. And then you use the smallest one in the centre of that. And that gives you those frames. And... I'm just going to hold on to this, those two pieces that came out of the centre of that, but for the moment, all I need is this one. Now, I need 10 of these pieces for the roof, and you can see there that I've already got the 10 cut, and I have used this die and this one together, and I've cut out that lovely pink and put it on top of the ivory, and again, I'm using 300 GSM card, and I know some of you prefer to use lighter weight, but 
I just think this is, makes it nice and sturdy. For the sides then, I've got this die and I've cut that out 10 times. And for the decoration on the top of that, I've used both of these together. And the reason is that this doesn't have an outside cutting edge. That cuts the detail in and you could use that in two layers, but I've used it in one and I've got the 10 ready here. So I have burnished all my score lines. Everything's burnished really, really well. And I'm just going to go ahead now and glue the 10 of these around the outside of the base here. So that's the medium sized base and I'm going to glue all of those on the whole way around. Whenever the glue has grabbed on all of those then you can go ahead and put glue on all of the side panels and glue all of these together. I will come back and add a piece onto the bottom there to cover the glue tabs as well and I've done the same on my other little uh, fairy house as well but for now I'm just going to add these sides to each other just glue them on. glue those little tabs at the top together as you go along but I just like to do that at the end and make sure the sides are perfectly aligned first of all and then come back and hold them together with little pegs while they're drying. So I have added a little curve to most of these and I'm just going to finish that off. Now I'm going to take this piece and all the pieces the same as that and attach them onto this size of a 10-sided uh, figure for want of a better word and I'm just going to glue that on like this around the edges just the way I did with the last one there and form a net and then whenever all of the pieces are dried and attached I'll come back and add another one of those 10 sided pieces onto the top to cover all the glue tabs and then I'll come in and glue all the side panels together as well but because I've used 300 GSM card and then I've got 216 in that I do need to just be sure that all of my pieces are well moulded first of all. So I can do that either just by curving it over the side of the desk or by running a little pen in behind it just to give it a mould. So when you're attaching all of these pieces together then, just put the glue on the glue tabs. I actually put a little bit on that little square tab as well, but you don't really need it. That's really just to keep the curve from looking good without a little gap in it. And then I'll come up here to the top edge and make sure that these two lines are perfectly aligned. Hold that one in place. And then just take your time. Have patience with that. That actually doesn't take too long because that glue is pretty quick drying, but I always hold that one first and then just move my thumb and finger together in behind there, my fingers in behind my thumb and carry on up to the top. So there we are and I've folded all these pieces back and I'm looking at that now and thinking if that was in sort of different patterned paper or striped or something and you had like a big semicircle on the front and a button on the top that could be a baseball cap if we just find some way of opening it, but uh, I don't have time to explore all of that at the moment. So I'll leave that one with you. If you want, you can tell me how you've done it. Now, the large 10-sided uh, figure here, and then we take the smaller one. This is the third size down and cut the two frames out of that. And I've gone ahead and I've actually put some double-sided tape, and I don't normally do that, but I've done it. And I'm going to pop this inside here and fold those flaps all down onto it. I usually prefer glue, but I'm getting a little behind with these uh, samples just to get them all ready in time. So I'm popping that in there. The next one on top will be glued on anyway, because I'm going to glue this one right over the top of that to cover all those glue tabs. So there we are. Just the whole way around there.
sits down snugly then over the top and you can see it's really really neat looking from the inside there so i have gone ahead a little bit i'm actually in quite a wee bit of a hurry now because i need to get these posted off and i've spent quite a wee while just making sure i've got lots of nice things to post so you forgive me for having this piece already done but i've got another piece just to show you here we need this die cut this is for the little uh, window part that sits out on the roof but i do want to show you how to do that so uh, sorry i've gone ahead i've got this piece here then and i've given that a really really good mold that's it there and then on the inside i've, I've actually um, furnished all the tabs back and then on these bottom ones i've gone right along that with double-sided tape so right along there and it doesn't matter whether there's extra you know it was just one one strip right across then i put that around the plain die cut of this just like that and tuck those pieces in behind and that's the stage we're at here so they, these tabs then will get glued to the roof and this will as well so all of these pieces are actually all these glue tabs then are going to hold that onto the roof but now I want to cover these pieces and I have cut the same die cut here and taken the little tab off and that's just a little bit of mirror card I'm going to glue that on there and then I've added another one which is this die cut with this I'm actually going to cut that bottom piece off that as well because I don't want so many pieces tucked in the back and that has given me that which will then go on here I'm going to glue those two layers together and then glue that by the tabs straight onto the curve of the roof So now I've taken the little detail die that goes into the middle of this. There's a little one with some ridges on it. I thought I'd lost it there. That one. And I have just run that through my die cutting machine. And then I've trimmed it off just exactly where that edge is there. Because I didn't really want uh, all of the outside on it. I just want to put this little pink detail on. And I'm going to glue that just over the top there. So you'll see it doesn't cover the whole thing, but it just gives a lovely little detailed effect. And then um, you can see some of the ivory around the outside of it as well. And that ties it in with the rest of the roof and all the rest of it. I have my little door ready and I've put a circle of silver card in behind there and just a little bit of pink in behind where the heart is. And that's one of the little doors that I used on the other little uh, fairy house. And I don't want to attach that this time without putting the little step on first. So I have used this die and this one and this one. And I've used those all together. So this cut out this shape and I have molded this piece around just a little bit and folded all those little glue tabs back. I've also cut two of these with this and then I have used this one and this together and I've even just helped it along its way with a little embossing tool while it was still in the die and that gave me that lovely little pattern there. So first of all I'm going to just attach this in here so I'm going to glue the bottom of this the whole way around here. Glue that in. I'll just show you. So for speed this time again, I've just put some double sided tape on there and you can see it doesn't even matter if it's, uh, you know, if there's too much of it and it's just coming over the back because I'm going to be gluing this, uh, gluing another little one over the top of it to cover that. But there's what, there's what you're aiming for and you'll get all of those right in and around there. And then you can go ahead and glue this little tab either on the inside or the outside. It doesn't really matter because it's going to get covered up anyway. I'm going to put it on the inside just like that. And now I can go ahead and glue the top 
step on here. So I want to put the top one on like that and then I'll add this one on the top because this is 216 GSM card. This one is uh, 300 so it's nice and firm but I like to put one on underneath this and then I'll cut another one and put it on over these glue tabs here as well. Whenever the little step is in place, mm -hmm. I can go ahead and add the little door. This little die cuts out the chimney piece, so all you need to do is mould that again or give it a little shape and fold those little glue tabs in and glue this back one on here. So glue this into the inside this time. Just like that. And then these ones get folded in and that just attaches to the side of the house like that. Whoops, <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, the good thing about that is that the little glue tabs are very, very accessible with a pen or a stylus or whatever. And you can just go down in there and make sure they're in the right place. And you've got a lovely little chimney and your little window. Well, there were so, so many ways of decorating this that um, I really just wanted to add as much on as possible. But anyhow, I've used this little window here for the sides of it. So I've actually cut that one out in silver and then I've used that one and that one together in ivory and glued that over the top but with these little shutters in behind just before I glued them actually onto the house. So I've done that and then popped the little roses up on 3D foam pads and added some foliage in, lots of flowers. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, the jewel drops, sorry, the, the glitter drops that I've used are actually wet and that's why I'm being very, very careful. Oh yes, the little toadstools at the front here. So those were both actually joined together in the little die set but one's quite a bit higher up than the other and I wanted them the same height. I wanted them both to be down at the ground here. So I just snipped them off and the piece uh, just rounded as best I could and popped the one up on 3D foam pads in front of the other. And I think it turned out pretty well. I like it like that. And then we've got foliage coming down from here and a little bit trailing off here and uh, lots of little flowers all around the back. And yeah, I must show you this. There's a little sign at the back saying, fairies welcome and does not look like a bit like clematis or passion flower or something coming around that window well i love that and i hope you do too now that's me all done i have got my two little fairy houses finished now i really would have loved to have made some cards or something else along with that but i just don't have time now because um, i've spent rather a long time making all of the things that i've made for all of these launches and um I need to get them posted off. So I hope you really enjoy these and don't forget that you can use them on cards. You can use them on all sorts of things. Little box frames would be absolutely beautiful as well. Lots and lots of different ways that you could use that and I might come back at some other stage. I know I always say that and then I get too busy but I might come back at another stage with this and uh, make something else with it but I do think that there's lots of elements out of that set that I'll definitely be using and adding into other cards and other projects as I go along in the future. So do keep an eye out for those. That's me all done. And that's actually my last project for March Madness finished now. And I need to get all these boxed up and posted off. And I hope you love them as much as I did. I had such a ball making all of these. I really, really enjoyed myself. They're absolutely fabulous die sets. So thank you very much. My affiliate links for everything that I've used will, as usual, be down in the description of the video and thanks to everybody who does already use those I really really appreciate that and if you haven't subscribed I would ask you again if you would think about doing that because subscribing to my channel and leaving me a thumbs up and a comment really really helps it makes a big difference to my channel and I would really appreciate it if you would do that too it doesn't cost you anything but it means a lot to me and in the meantime happy crafting bye bye